I am feeling positive today and I'm Are so you? happy to have you here. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I really you. like the Good last picture we just saw of you. Yeah. I think you should put a picture again. I know a comparison. The so fro. you had your fro on and yeah. you cut your hair. Was that the process of transiting from Adora to Lumina? <laughs> It actually wasn't, you know. I, I was just really thinking about comfort because having a fur in Nigeria is not quite the easiest thing to do. Yeah. Kill you. Temperature, you know, I have to deal with the warm, humid weather. So I was just like, you know, I cut it. Makes and, sense. Yeah. And it looks really good. <laughs> Makes thank sense. Thank you, thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm getting used to it. Everyone's used to seeing me with a fur. I think I'm actually getting to use yeah. this as well. I That's like this. Brilliant. It suits you. It does. Thank you. But let's start off with positivity. Mm -hmm. What is positivity to you? And why is it also very important to you? Um, positivity to me is really just, you know, the ability to, you know, to, to think in a positive light and to impact people's lives positively as well. I think it's just, you know, a happy mental state, um, you know, but also just finding the joy, you know, within you and then being able to spread that joy. Because I really think that, you know, whenever people think about being positive or, or being um, or, or impacting, you know, they're always thinking about, you know, their light versus thinking about how you can use your light to impact other people and then create a ripple effect of some sort that allows them to share their light. So it's like, you know, it's a chain reaction, really. I, I think the beauty really comes from other people versus yourself. And I think that's very evident in the work that you do. You yeah. basically are the kind of person who tries to help the people with their creative ideas and let's talk about socially aware socially, socially africa. africa yes yeah. you, you help people you help kids yes you know you take celebrities you, i think you also did a project called the one big circle yes we did it all right so tell us about brilliant. socially africa how did it start and what have you yeah. been up to with it um so so socially africa actually started as a result of conversations that i was having with my peers where whenever i would talk to people they would say um you know i don't think i can give back now when i when i reach inserts wealthy person status, right? So they would mention someone. So for instance, I, when I reach Dangote status, I'll start giving back. But right now I don't have money. I don't have anything to give back. And so, you know, I had, I heard that conversation over and over for a period of time. And I said to myself, you know what? We don't need to wait till we've actually accomplished everything that we want to accomplish before we actually start to give back to our communities. And so Socially Africa was born out of that. So our focus wasn't just giving back, but teaching other people how to give back their time, their resources. Sometimes it's not even about money. You know, we've, we've, we've worked with um, people where we realize that giving your time is actually what they want. You know, so even when we work with the kids, the kids, yes, they appreciate the donations, they appreci appreciate the things you buy for them, but what they really don't get is time. It's that ability to see people who they aspire to be like, um, sit with them in the same spaces, you know, play with them within their school premises, things that they don't get to see outside. So that's really what Socially Africa was about. Um, and so what we did was, obviously, I run a um, for-profit business as well. And so we started to just allocate 5% of our profits into Socially Africa. Um, and it's just grown that way. So for the first three years, it was pretty much focused on, you know, our personal money going into this project. Um, and... I mean, I'm excited to say that it's been it's been three years and we've done so much work like we we just did art for a cause in our 14th school um, a month and a half ago, you know, and, and it's just been brilliant. And we've also done a school in Sri Lanka. Wow. wow. So, I mean, so that's yeah. So that was exciting. We did a school in Sri Lanka two years ago as well. So, I mean, it's 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 beautiful, you know, just teaching people give back, give your time, give your, you know, give your your attention. You know, sometimes people really just need attention. True. You know, they even Do you often feel say, like that? Yeah. yeah, and they often say that the best duty that you can mm -hmm. ever give to yourself is that that you give to other people. Yeah. And I feel like we often underestimate the power of actually focusing on others and how yeah. it also helps you as a person. It really but does. you're someone that's very multifaceted. You're doing a lot of things, running your own personal business, mm -hmm. running your own NGO, you're a yeah. rapper. And I want to touch on that. We have very few female rappers in Nigeria and the challenge comes in making it. What would you say are the main challenges that you face as a female rapper in Nigeria today, but at the same time, why are you still positive and pushing forward with rap? Um, okay, so so I, I'm new to the game, right? So so I haven't really necessarily faced challenges um, in the as a rapper, right? However, I do I have faced challenges such as um, now this is not on the rap side, but just in general is being an entrepreneur in this environment, right? Um, I'm working with brands and I'm, I'm handling brand portfolios, right, for corporate brands. Um, that is a lot, right? And so sometimes the thought process is, how are you a rapper? Like, how are you in the music industry 
at handling my brand portfolio. So, so that's the, that's the um, line that I often have to tell, right? But what I've realized is that, again, you know, because I'm so focused on purpose, right, and positivity, I realized that it's important that I express myself through these various mediums, um, regardless of whether it is, uh, you know, whether it's comfortable <clears throat> to someone else, right? Uh, because for every ripple effect of positivity that I set up, to set off, right, um, I receive satisfaction. And I also know that people's lives are being improved, you know. So I think this is about not being selfish. This is about understanding that, you know, when you do decide to fully express your purpose, then sometimes it will take you out of your comfort zone. I was saying this on Instagram yesterday as well. Um, it will take you out of your comfort zone, but it's important that you understand that it's a selfless journey. And so, yes, people will have a picture of what they think your life should be because of what you do. But you need to understand that, you know, it's not so much about what you do, but what, who you are. Yeah. Right. And so, yeah, I, I, I haven't, you know, to answer your question in summaries, I haven't really faced any challenges as a rapper, as a female rapper yet. Um, but I'm, I'm excited to take, take on the them challenges. on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, like, I like that you said I, I'm excited really, to yeah. take it on. I like that you said it's not really about what you do yeah. or who you are. And yeah. I'm going to, my last question today for you would be, who is Adora? Right. So while you think about that, let's talk about you as an entrepreneur. Okay. From your social media, we have an insight into the kind of organization you run. It's mm -hmm. a very inclusive organization. You have lots of young people you work yeah. for. You are, you're a boss. You pay their salaries. Yes. But your <laughs> office is the kind of office where it's so really laid back. Everybody just work and chill mm -hmm. and you focus on productivity. Mm -hmm. We have that. We find that in modern day employed um, employments, you know, we don't find that level of ease, mm -hmm. you know, with regards to employees and the relationships with the employers, yes. you deal with millennials. What would you say would be the greatest thing you've learned with regards to manage, managing millennials? And what would be the, the greatest challenge and the greatest, greatest tip you would give to someone who's um, mm -hmm. an employer of labor as well? Um, I'll start with the greatest challenge, right? Uh, the greatest challenge I really faced with working with young people is um, sometimes the absence of discipline. And, and that's mostly based on the fact that a lot of times when people think about themselves being creative, they think that creativity, being a creative, right, means that you shouldn't apply structure, right? Um, and it's such a flawed thought. It's a flawed way to think, you know, it's that if I'm a creative person, I don't need structure, you know, I don't need process. This is all about my ideas. Um, but to truly thrive in this world, right, you have to have some level of structure and process to what it is that you're creating. And so that's something that I really teach to the young guys that work with me is, look, the ideas are great, you know, but again, you don't want to have, you don't want to be an ideas person because if you're an ideas person and you can't actually execute, then you're not creating value, right? And ultimately what you want to create is value, right? And so I'm very big on teaching structure. So as much as I'm a creative and I play in the creative space, I am like a teacher, like a professor, you know, when it comes to management because I'm extremely project driven and I always think about execution. Right. And so that's, you know, that's a big thing with them. Um, now, in terms of what have I learned, I have learned, you know, I, I think I've just really learned how to understand people and understand where they're trying to go. Because I think that if you fully as an employer, if you fully understand the people that work with you and where they're going, if you understand their vision, then it's easy to find ways that your company and your organization and your goals, you know, fit into their personal goals as well. Um, because if you don't have that, then you just have people who are just working at a job, right? And so with my guys, we always say to them, look, what is it that you want to do? And even when I do their evaluations, I always say, let's forget the organization. Because whatever you learn here, you're going to take somewhere else at some point in your life, right? Or you're going to decide to start up your own business. So you're not doing anything that you're doing for me. It's not about me. It's about you and building yourself. So I always say to them, what's your personal goal? Where are you trying to go? Because... Again, that also allows me as a manager, you know, to figure out how to help them accomplish that goal while simultaneously accomplishing our, you know, collective goal as an organization. And I think that that's very key um, when it comes to leadership, you know, and, and we don't see that applied a lot. No, we don't. In, <laughs> we don't see that applied a lot. way around of, oh, you know, try and fit into our goals mm -hmm. rather than the employer yeah. looking at what the person's individual yeah. goals are. But so it's challenging. I tell you, it's challenging, you know, because, and, and that, that's the thing, you know, people say, for instance, just in general, that if you do good, it's challenging because um, w when you're doing good things, people will say, oh, they'll take advantage of you, 
right? So it does come with that as well. But again, um, it's understanding purpose. Let's go back there. <laughs> you know, when you understand purpose, then you're not too bothered about people taking advantage of you, right? <laughs> you have a goal. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's like, let's focus on the goal. Let's not talk about the, the, let's not get personal. You know, let's just do the work that we need to do to, you know, to create and happiness stuff. is also just so key. Mm -hmm. Like, if happiness isn't placed at the center of yeah. everything, everything can collapse. How do you yeah. also encourage people who work with you and people who work for you mm -hmm. to stay happy? How do you thrive and how do you make sure that you're thriving in a happy environment at all times? Yeah, so, I mean, you know what they say, happiness is a state of mind. So, um, you know, for me, again, it's about building their minds, right? And, and again, going back to the basic understanding that we're human beings, but that we're also, you know, and I say this a lot as well, that we're spirits in human bottles, right? And so with the guys that I work with and just in general, the people that I influence even on my social media, you know, across my platforms is I always try and go back to making them understand, right, that all of this, right, is superficial. You know, it's great, but it's superficial. But what really matters is edifying your spirit. And so I'm very big on encouraging people, right, but encouraging with honesty, you know, so you can't just try to clean up a mess by saying everything positive, right? You have to figure out what are the challenges that you have and how can we work through these things. So really with happiness, um, I'm just big on really thinking about it from a mental perspective. You know, let's try and cleanse your mind because if I can, if I can get into your heart and we can cleanse the heart and the mind, you'll be happy. <laughs> you yeah. know, and you're not always going to be happy. And that's the, that's again, that's the beauty of life. You know, we don't want to tell people that Waves. you need to always be happy because if we do that, then we're just going to cause all sorts of mental health <laughs> issues. That's the truth. You know, you want to yeah. tell people that, look, it's OK not to be happy, you know, sometimes, you know, but again, perspective. You have to think to yourself, you know, how do I view that as one? Well, how can I overcome that? You know, and. It's, there's so many questions we can't even answer as human Very beings, true. but we just do the best we can, right? In doing the best that you can, you've succeeded in wearing several hats, Dora. You're not just yes. um, an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. you're a rapper, you're a wife, yes. you're a mother. How does your home front survive <laughs> with all the drama that is yeah. going on in your life? <laughs> you, you know, um, I, I think just... There's a synergy between myself and my husband, you know, um, we are very respectful of what it is that, you know, we were put on earth to do. We understand that it's not just about our relationship, you know, it's he has a purpose that he needs to fulfill. I have a purpose that I need to fulfill. And so we need to help each other fulfill our purpose. So we're so focused on that. Um, and so it's easier for us to collaborate, right, because we see ourselves as a team. So if I have stuff to do, then he's with our son. If he has stuff to do, I'm with our son. You know, it's, it's teamwork, team effort, you know. And so it's not so much, and also, I mean, it, it does help that we've been friends for a long time because <laughs> friendship definitely helps. Um, you know, that's, that's really what it is, is, is I think now, not just with your spouse, but I think with relationships and friendships in general, is always understanding what the objective is and then working together right to accomplish the objective and understanding that it's not about you you I know like day. we always want to focus on our feelings like how you feel how you feel how i feel you know and everyone wants to focus on that but the truth is like it's not so much about how you feel all the time you have to tell yourself that look there's a higher thing that we need to do you know and it's the same even with my office like with my work you know i tell my guys look we can beat each other off up after we've accomplished the goal but we need to get the client work done. So let's get it done, then we'll fight. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but there's work to be done. And, and I think that's an approach that I have generally in life mm -hmm. is I always say, again, you know, my self-awareness gave me strong. It's very strong. You know? fact, and and I, it, it didn't happen overnight, okay. <laughs> but it's strong. How did you get that? <laughs> it, it's, it's a long story. Okay. It, it's, that, it's, a series of, yeah, it's a series okay. of things you know, that got mm -hmm. me there to where I am. And it's still building. You know? And so that's why I'm able to you know, say the things that I say and people think that it happened overnight, but it didn't, you know, it's, it's a journey. And that's the beauty of journeys, it's experience. You go through stuff, you know, you learn stuff, you get better, you tell yourself, you know, I'm going to become um, an improved version of my yesterday. And then every day is day one. You know, every day is day every one. Every day is day one. It's day Brilliant. one. So it's like, yeah. you know, you, the same way you got to that job, the first day suited up, looking clean, 
you need to do that every day, show up fully, you know, and just understand that, look, it's day one, I'm going to do everything I can to get better. And that's how you get better. And you renew yeah. your mind every single yeah. day. Why would you, you know, say that you see yourself in five years' time? <laughs> I don't know. You know, that's, that's a brilliant question, but really I don't know. And, and, and again, I say I don't know because um, of my experience, right? Because I found myself, I mean, I didn't know I was going to be doing, I was going to be rapping right now. Um, and I've just found that at the end of the day, um, because I'm just going to let my, you know, my purpose in life take, take me where it needs to take me. And I also understand that, you know, again, because I'm a spirit and an adorer of bottle, um, God is going to use me the way he wants to use me. So, so I'm not too bothered about five years from now. I'm not thinking about it. Let me put it that way. I'm just, okay. I'm just writing the waves. I love <laughs> you five years ago, you didn't know you were going to be rapping. So at what point did you realize I mean... that you were switching into the music industry? Have I switched? That's, you are that, switching. That's you already question. have a music video which we're going to look at in a moment. <laughs> yeah. So um, at what point did you decide you wanted to take rap? And what's, what's yeah. your music like? What's the message? Yeah. Um, okay, so, so I actually started, I was exposed to rap really early in life because I, I'm, you know, the last child of uh, my family and my brother, I only have brothers. I'm the only girl. So naturally, my brothers were hip hop heads and, you know, I listened to a lot of music, but I listened to a lot of conscious music. My brothers would listen to like Talib Kweli, Mos Def, KRS-One. So I was listening to all of that kind of messaging, right? And I would just find myself in the corner fitting to myself. I was bad, by the way, you know, <laughs> but, um, but, you know, I would just rap because I, w I had messages that I wanted to get out. Um, and so, and I've always been big on using words to... Um, to empower people, right? So I took poetry, rap, you know, and my, you know, my, my again, my, my knowledge, right? I put them together and I decided that I was going to use them, right, to empower people. So that's, that's how Lumina was born, really. It's just another medium of expression. That's why I don't feel like I'm entering the, the music industry. Um, I mean, I feel like Again, we're exposed to so many industries and we should be part of every industry. Like, I don't think that you should be, you should tell yourself that I'm only in this space. I'm in the entertainment industry and that's it. You know, you, we're just so much more. So I'm expressing myself across industries. It's just, it's human beings that came together and defined what the industry is, True. you know, but the truth is we're humans expressing. So just express. So I don't really see it as a, a move. I just see it as another avenue, mm. right? Is, you know, for me to be able to get out to as many people as possible. Um, my messaging for my music is really very positive. Um, it's, again, reminding people of who they already are or who they need to be or who they want to be. Um, so it's very aff affirmative. You know, um, I want to just I want people to listen to my music and just feel like, you know what, this is going to lighten up my day. And then I want to share it with other people as well. And I also want people to remind other people that they are light. But you see, here's right? the thing. But this is this is literally where we yeah. find ourselves at a crossroads because right. I find that people that are so motivating, mm -hmm. the go around motivating so many mm -hmm. people, I always ask myself how they get their own mm -hmm. motivation. Mm -hmm. Would you say that most of your motivation comes from within or would you say that you also require motivation from other people? Um, most of my motivation comes from seeing the work that I do, again, you know, bless someone else's life. And I think that's the same with most people who go around motivating people. Because um, for me, it's not just about motivation and inspiration. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm big on motivation and inspiration, but I'm bigger on impact, right? And impact for me is seeing you actualize the gifts that you have, right? And so I work with a lot of people in, you know, who are talented, you know, who know that they have a talent, but don't know how to take that talent and turn it into something viable, right? And so my interest is always, okay, how do we hit your goal? All right. Right? And that's where I get my... I'm very excited that you do this from. because there are many people who have ideas that want to transform, yeah. them, transform them into, you know, goals and yeah. money-making um, outlets. So yeah. how can people contact you on social media? Um, you can hit me up. Uh, my Instagram handle is at adora.lumina, and that's A-H-D-O-R-A dot Lumina, um, L-U-M-I-N-A. You can hit me up on there. Um, my email address is also in there on my Instagram. It's the same across Twitter, Facebook. It's Adora Lumina. All right. Um, they can contact we don't really me. have a lot of time That's now. Fine. We have so many questions I mean, we want to I don't ask want to you, go, but, but we want to listen to your music like, video yeah, and we want to have it. a feel of it. Very quickly, in 10 seconds, what's the difference between Adora and Lumina? 
Is there a difference? Is there a difference? They're both bright lights. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, so take so a look at this They're video. Adora's... Uh, I think it's a video. lyrics video. It's not yes. my actual video. Yes. But yeah. The lyrics yeah. video. So listen to the lyrics. Feel it. Be conscious. Be socially <laughs> aware. And hit her up on Instagram at adora.lumina. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank, Thank you so for having much. me. The enjoy I this love light the of the world. Definitely. Yes, yes studio. please enjoy. To enjoy more of this, our Ubunga videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.